Greetings, Commanders. Let me regale you of my exploits in the black. Forgetting the issues with Planet Tech for a minute, I have gone on a bit of a jaunt into the black to experience the full measure of the exploration game loop, including new content introduced in Odyssey. Especially now we can move on foot, like scanning planets, finding simple biological life, and scanning them, etc. First, I needed to ensure I had the right exploration equipment for both my ship and my suit. For my ship, the Discovery Scanner and Detailed Surface Scanner DSS modules are required in order to scan the system and find lifeforms to sample or points of interest to explore. For on-foot gameplay, I require the Artemis suit which comes with a genetic sampler, but more on this later. When entering a new system, it's usually customary to use the Discovery Scanner, or colloquially, honk the system, to ascertain the amount of bodies the system contains. Once this is established, you can try opening up the system map, but if it is an undiscovered system, none of the bodies will display unless you use the full spectrum system scanner, shown here. In this system, for example, there are 25 bodies for discovery, so I use the FSS scanner to reveal each one, much like a scratch card to expose the contents beneath. The time it takes to scan all objects is dependent on the amount of bodies in the system. I have encountered systems that have around 60 objects, and some can even have more. During the scanning of a body, information is revealed, which may include geological and biological signals. You can also see information on its composition, the planet's makeup affecting its appearance in some instances. Once the FSS scanning is completed, opening up the system map now will give you a schematic of the system, providing the appearance and location of each celestial body. However, this is where things can become a little monotonous. If you have a system with high amounts of celestial objects, it can take large amounts of time to fly to each planetary object and scan them using a detailed surface scanner. The issue I have is the bodies appear homogenous mostly, with very little of interest to discover on them. You may discover more than one geological signal, which could be geysers or lava spouts, or multiple biological signals with varying species. But at the end of the day, after exploring regions like these over and over, they all start feeling familiar. As I zoom in on each object in the system, there is very little difference in their appearance to note, at least from the system map anyway. There are rare occasions, however, when you may encounter a planetary body with unique scars, trenches or varying colours, but usually not. Moreover, visiting planetary rings can be a treat, but after a while they too can seem homogenous. Here's an example of how long it can take to reach far out planetary bodies. I would not mind so much if there were things of interest to discover at these distant places, but in a lot of cases there simply isn't. Personally, I always head for planetary objects with landable, tenuous atmospheres, regardless of how far they are. In my opinion, I find bodies with tenuous atmospheres provides a rich environment for incredible vistas. But even this can get tedious sometimes after a while because of how I like the old scene. Ok, let's take a closer look at detail surface scanning. Everything about detail surface scanning is very similar to that of Horizons, except in Odyssey, instead of highlighting points of interest, you are now given a heat map. Yay! Oh boy, where do I begin? Surface scanning involves deploying several probes at several angles through a specialised interface. Scan coverage only needs to reach 90% for a complete scan. Once this is done, in Odyssey we now have a heat map, or heat plume, and can cover most of the plan providing an indication of where biological and geological areas are located. You may be wondering why I have such enthusiasm about the heat map, but here's my problem. I can see how the heat map might be useful, but in a lot of cases it frustrates. Here, for example, I have no idea where the individual biological signals are. As I change the filter, the heat map doesn't change at all. I'm also not sure what it means when the blue shade deepens. Does it mean there is greater concentration of something? I don't know. We could really do with having a scale on the side indicating what each shade of blue means. Is this intentional, or is it a bug? 
I hope it's the latter and we see improvements on this tool. Another issue is when the heat map is on, the atmosphere of the planet disappears. Why? Is this intentional or a bug? If it's intentional, I can only surmise that having both the heat map and atmosphere rendering at the same time further impacts on performance. And we don't want any further performance hits now, do we? The last issue I have with the heat map is as soon as you exit orbital cruise and enter a glide, the heat map becomes inaccessible from this point forward, meaning you have to re-enter supercruise to review the heat map again if you wish to determine a new location to explore. Granted, the heat map is large enough not to miss, however instead it forces you to skim the surface of the planet to locate the points of interest you are looking for. In Horizons, you could access the points of interest from the left navigation panel. However, in Odyssey, you don't have this luxury. They're completely absent. Skimming the planet's surface in an endeavor to hunt for the point of interest the heat map hints at can take some time despite the heat map indicating biological or geological concentrations in the area. There is no transference of the heat map to your radar, which would be awesome. So here I am using the external camera, lowering it towards the surface so I can quickly visualize any biological or geological signals. Now that I've found some biology to investigate, it's time to land and disembark. The next step requires the exploration suit Artemis, which is designed for exobiology and is the only suit equipped with a genetic sampler needed for scanning biomes. Mine is currently a grade 3 suit with no engineering which randomly spawned at a starport I was lucky to visit and purchase from. Genetic sampler that comes with the Artemis suit was first introduced into Elite during Phase 3 of Odyssey Alpha and in Frontier's words collects and indexes samples from simple living organisms. The genetic sampler comes with two modes. One, pulse scanning, which briefly surrounds the player in a radar type way to identify diversified organisms to sample using colors. Two, extracting a partial sample of the simple organism which is contained in the attached canister. The device resembles a claw, which will briefly animate open when taking pulse scans of the surrounding environment and open and spin when extracting a sample from a specimen. The reception of the tool on initial inception was largely negative due to how difficult the minigame was, which you needed to complete as part of the scanning process, and you had to perform this action three times to acquire enough biodiversity for a complete scan. FDF have made the minigame automated now after the furor, but you are still required to scan specimens three times at different locations outside the specimen's clonal colony range, and the range can vary depending on the species. Okay, let's discuss issues I have with this game mechanic. I'm not going to start berating the game over this gameplay loop, instead I endeavoured to provide constructive feedback through examples in the vain hope of persuading change. I suppose my main concern is the need to scan specimens three times at different locations, forcing you to cover large areas. Although I find it not too terrible, it's the fact that if you encounter areas with more than one specimen to scan, and I have been to places where there have been at least four specimens in close proximity to each other, you cannot scan other species of biomes without first destroying partial scans you may have already taken. You have one canister, and that's it. I can't see why you cannot have a collection of canisters to enable you to scan more species of biomes at once, reducing the need of going over areas you have once been. You have just watched me traverse the landscape, sped up in video to negate the boredom I may put you through to reach other biomes that fit the criteria of enough genetic biodiversity. Now I'm travelling back toward the second simple living organism, but before that I need to complete a third partial scan to complete the sample. Otherwise, I'll lose all the genetic sample that I've connected. Here you can see if I try to scan this simple organism I receive a warning the partial sample I have collected so far will be discarded. The purple colour shade generated from the pulse scanner indicates this also.
Once you've collected the full scan of the specimen, you can take the scan to Vista Genomics for profit and towards increasing your exobiologist rank. However, I believe what may improve this gameplay loop is having the ability to use the specimens you collect to create medicines or sewer enhancements, etc. I also think FDEV missed an opportunity to allow us to scan and collect geological materials on foot. We could use towards healing ailments to provide protection from certain environments or building materials, etc. As far as I can tell, and I'm happy to be corrected on this, the amount of simple life forms in the game amount to around 20 and seem to be handcrafted rather than procedurally generated. The only variance I have encountered is that each of the 20 simple life forms has increased in number by only changing their colour to signify a different species. Example, yellow brain tree, red brain tree, green brain tree, etc. How much the number increases to is unknown. I find this approach pretty similar to Planet Generation in that they all seem homogenous and rather lazy on the part of FDEV. Wouldn't it have been more beneficial to procedurally generate all of the life forms in the game? What do you think? The final issue I'll mention is that the location of any geological or biological signal is not persistent. If you log to menu and log back in, the genome will have moved elsewhere. So if you discover a rich crystal field of found materials, you will not be able to rely on coordinates given by another commander, as we can in Horizons, as they will have moved by the time you get there. Okay commanders, this is it. If you like, please stay and watch the end of the video. I clipped together a lot of the worlds I have visited over the last few weeks, and if you think they look the same, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and thanks for watching. And please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.